Welcome everyone to the third development log for my indie game, Clean Up on Isle Goblin. If you haven't seen the first two videos, feel free to check them out at the links in the description below. If you're too lazy though, I'm sure you'll get the gist of it anyway. So jumping right into it, the main issue to tackle for this month is pathfinding. We want these little NPCs to be given a location somewhere and be able to walk to it all by themselves. There are definitely a lot of aspects to this that make it challenging. We'll need to give each NPC a schedule of where they need to be at what time, implement how they'll know where the heck the destination is, they'll need to determine the shortest path, and we'll also have to struggle with allowing them to be able to find a path between multiple different zones that may not all be loaded at the same time. This leads us to our first major difficulty, since so far I've only been working within one scene. So the way Unity works is that you have what's called a scene, and within that scene you have objects, and within those objects you have components. I've been making new objects and components so far so that these little guys can animate and attack each other, but as I add more and more junk to the scene, the performance starts to go down. Essentially, I can only have a scene be so big and full of stuff before the whole game starts to lag. Now there are two main ways I've seen to get past this limitation. Chunk loading, and just having smaller scenes. So first off is chunk loading. Games that seem infinite, or at least don't have loading screens like Minecraft or Terraria implement this. Whenever you walk far enough into an area, or chunk, it spawns in all the stuff for the next chunk and destroys all the old stuff from the chunk that you can't see anymore. You're essentially on a gigantic treadmill where it takes away the old and adds the new stuff in front of you in real time so it seems seamless. This is super cool, but also a ton of work. I started to implement it for a different game idea a while ago, and while I got it working, it took a lot of effort. Probably a little too time consuming for me to come up with all by my lonely self. So that brings us to the next option, loading a bunch of smaller scenes. Games like Stardew Valley or Metroid do this. Once you reach the edge of an area, you get a quick loading screen. During this time, it unloads everything from the previous area and loads in the new one. Nice and easy, not very complicated. I decided to choose this option since it's a lot quicker to implement and probably more fitting to this type of game. I made it so all of the important managers don't get deleted whenever we change scenes and added a little fade out and fade in while it's happening. Here's a quick glance behind the scenes. You'll see me walk up to the little node, it tells my scene manager script to change scenes, the little node has a value saved in it so it knows where to put the player when the new one loads, so when the screen goes dark, loads in the new area, and then removes the darkness, ta-da, we're in a new scene in the correct spot. And uh, here's how it looks in the finalized game view. So now that we have multiple scenes, we need some way for the NPCs to be able to navigate around. First, we'll need to give them a schedule to follow. I made it so each NPC could have a schedule, and each schedule could have meetings. A meeting has a meeting time, estimated time it'll take to get there from the previous meeting, and a name of the scene that it takes place in. With all this info, the NPCs were ready to attend whatever fancy appointments an NPC needs to attend. All they need now is a way of knowing how to get there. You may think that this is pretty easy. If we know what scene we're in, and we know the scene we're going to, we should just be able to find a path, right? Well, yeah, that's pretty much it. It wasn't too bad. For this I looked up an algorithm that finds the best path between two nodes in this sort of graph, and came up with a script that does it for me. I won't go into too much detail, but it basically probes each connected scene and assigns each scene a travel cost from the start. Once all the scenes have been given a cost, it goes backwards from the end one, choosing the lowest cost option that will lead it to the start. Pretty simple, it just took a bit of tinkering. I now had a cool fancy script that could figure out which scenes are connected to which other scenes, and the NPCs have little itineraries for their day to day events. The one last tool we need before we start sending them on their way is, you guessed it, pathfinding. But before I dive into that, which is admittedly my favorite part of this whole game so far, I have a fun announcement. So apparently while developing a game, it's important that you get a Steam page up and running quick so that people can start wishlisting. Since wishlisting on Steam is a surefire way that people will immediately and certainly get notified upon the release of the game, or any time you have it on sale, you're guaranteed a direct line to your interested buyers. Then, if enough people buy it, you may end up on the front page of Steam. Which is of course a fantastic thing because now you're reaching all sorts of other people that you wouldn't have otherwise. So I went ahead and set up the Steam page for the game to start raking in those wishlists for anyone who might be remotely interested. It's got some pretty dry and pathetic screenshots that I hope to replace as I develop more, and the cover art is pretty temporary. I think once I have all the characters and enemies flushed out, I'd like to have cover art that shows all of them instead, but for now this'll do. As a sort of side note, I was really surprised by the amount of images they require. You need to upload like 20 different variations of your cover art just to make sure all the different file sizes for different things are met. It took way longer than I expected, so if you're planning to put something out there yourself, I'd advise you to make your art bigger than you thought you'd need so that you can make different crops of it for the different banners and logos or whatever. But anyways, if you want to be notified about release or any sales, feel free to click that link down below later and hit that wishlist button. 
I'll admit I feel a bit weird telling future potential buyers my evil marketing schemes to get them to wishlist so I can take their money, but I thought it was an interesting part of the process that uh, I didn't really ever think of before now. I didn't realize wishlists were so useful from a marketing aspect. Apparently it's kind of the go-to metric for indicating future sales. But that's enough of that. Back to the fun stuff. One of the most commonly used pathfinding algorithms is A-star. It's a very simple idea at its base. If you have an array of all the grid tiles you can walk on and grid tiles you can't, like I do, then it will find the quickest path in the fastest way possible. We give each tile three costs. The first is a G cost, which is pretty much how far away we are from the start. The second is an H cost, which is pretty much how far we are from the end. And then the final cost, the F cost, is the sum of the two. The system will loop through every nearby node and find the one with the smallest F cost until we reach the end. There are definitely people who can explain it better and in more depth, so feel free to google around if you find that interesting and want to know more. I implemented this in Unity, and after a bit of work it's functioning perfectly. I can click between two places and it will instantly figure out the path between them. I ran some tests and found that a single call of this function now takes about 0.07 milliseconds, which is pretty dang good. This means we could have 100 creatures ask for a path at one time and it would only take about 7 milliseconds to process it, which shouldn't be visible during playtime. There's definitely some room for further optimization, but I'll only spend time on it if I start to see performance issues. Who knows, maybe someday I'll want thousands of enemies all at once, but until then, I'll leave it as is. So now we have all the tools we need to get these NPCs to run around their destinations and perform their little tasks. I made a script called NPC Movement Manager, creative name, I know, that's admittedly pretty complicated. At the start of the game, it figures out, based on the current time, where every NPC should be and guesstimates what times they should be at each scene in order to make their appointments on time. If any should be in the current scene, it spawns them in. And if they ever leave, it keeps track of how much time they've been gone. That way, if we ever follow them into a new scene, we can see how long they were there and put them in a reasonable spot so it looks like they walked there. After much suffering and toil, I finally got this to work. I've definitely got a few bugs to work out, but I've still got enough to demonstrate in this video. When the correct time strikes, this NPC will figure out the path and depart to their new location. When they leave the scene, the NPC manager counts how long they were gone, so when we follow them, it looks like they made progress. I also made it so that the NPC will choose different dialogues depending on where they are. To demonstrate this, I made it so that the character acts normal and nice in the town, somewhat suspicious as they're on their way walking to the cave, and then in the cave they offer some shady services in a shop. Then on the way back, they deny everything and act like nothing happened. There's lots of potential here for making all sorts of interesting storylines for the characters and giving them little personalities, even though deep down we know they're all soulless robots navigating on their predetermined paths. But that's about where we're at. I'm excited to make more progress, and as always, I love criticisms and suggestions, and would be happy to open up dialogues in the comments below if anyone has anything they'd like to discuss. Thanks again for supporting, and make sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notified about the next video. Also, if you've got some free time, feel free to check out the old Instagram for some fun drawings or the Steam page to wishlist. Links are all below. See you next time.